Yeah, this is not a drill, ladies and gentlemen. Yesterday, we ended up getting another drama over on Twitter within the FNF community, but this one is not going to end as good as the Indy Cross drama. You already know, Bob and Bosup is back in the spotlight, and we even talked about how the FNF Bob and Bosup drama in the past and how it affected Roblox FNF games, such as Roblox Funky Friday and Friday Night Bloxin. We'll definitely be diving into this once again, so make sure you smash the like and subscribe. We gotta get 7,000 likes so everybody knows what's going on within the community and also what changes it could do to Roblox. Let's get right into it. Yeah, even more drama is going on with the FNF Bob and Bosup mod. But this time, instead of Amor in blue, we have another contributor within the mod getting called out and also exposed. And that is going to be Ash, one of the programmers for the mod, as well as a ton of other mods within the FNF community as well. For those who don't know, Ash is actually a coder for many FNF mod projects in the community, and they do take pride in their work as well. And they've even worked on the Indie Cross mod too. But the whole thing ended up going down when Brightfire, the owner of the Indie Cross mod, posted about Ash over on their Twitter account, effectively exposing them on several matters. Number one, Ash had repo access when the build was leaked, but never communicated with the team. Two, Ash ended up giving the green light to people to upload the mod onto channels only when the leak was out. Number three, someone was actively leaking screenshots in the Indie Cross Discord, and when Ash was banned, it stopped catching them in the process along with many more statements against them. Even Tayai, the leader of the versus Tayai mod, chimed in with their response, especially since Tayai ended up working with Ash in the past on several other mods. Tayai said that one year ago, I thought Ash was cool. Like wow, code something cool and help a lot of mods. I want to be like him, but during the BNB EX update, after I joined the server, Ash really didn't want my help that much, but he didn't even start the code. So A told Ash that if he doesn't code, then give the repo to me, Bruh. and it looked like Ash didn't care about work. He gave me the repo and I could start coding alone until I got sick. Now if this is actually really crazy news, because in the past we did notice that the Bob and Bosip mod ended up getting leaked right before the big EX update. And that honestly caused a whole nother situation within the past. Well, Tayai might have actually just figured out who the individual was that leaked Bob and Bosa. They state that after the drama, I never talked to Ash again and I didn't know he is a leaker. Now I know who leaked BNB after Brightfire and Gang find the leaker in Indie Cross, and it was Ash after all. What? <laughs> that is just insane right there. I mean, it honestly does make sense, especially due to the fact that they did kick Ash out of that Discord server for Indie Cross, and then the, all of the leaks stopped leaking. And since Ash did also program for Bob and Bosup and many other mods, it does lead to a connection to that whole leakage on the other mod as well. But unfortunately, Unfortunately, the situation does go even worse than just leaking mods. Splatterdash ended up posting another big thread, exposing Ash even further. Now this thread is going to be very long, so stay tuned, this is going to be pretty insane. So Splatter first mentions that the Ash situation goes even deeper than just exposing and also leaking mods. And they also explain how Ash was a completely different individual at first and then changing to a very silent slash even cutting off communication with the rest of his team. Especially after the Bob and Bosup EX update. In fact, Ash's last message in Starlight Mayhem server was back on August 15th. When Brightfire mentioned Ash leaking Indie Cross, the first thing he mentioned was he had repo access but never communicated with anyone on the team. And most of the things on the Bob and Bosup leak were things only on the GitHub, if not a build uploaded in the coding channel. On top of that, 
Splatter did go on to say that Ash didn't do any kind of work until the leak was uploaded. And until he was offered payment by Amore as well. And even then, they still ended up slacking on their work and Splatter even noticed Ash goofing off and playing games in their spare time when they could have been working. This led to Amore screaming at people in voice chats when he heard the build was going to be delayed due to Ash. This eventually leads to a whole nother situation on December 24th where we can see a conversation between Ash and Cyrus the Fox, another member within the Discord server. Well, within their leaked DMs, Cyrus asked if Ash knew that Aether DX was working on another mod they were coding for, to which they replied with, well, yes. What's most concerning is that when Cyrus mentions why Ash still talks to Aether because she was interesting, they replied that it was one of the reasons why. Now for those of you who don't know who Aether DX is, that is a whole nother situation that honestly goes even deeper and a lot more worse than the current situation we're talking about. But this definitely does question to you why Ash is talking to Aether and still has that connection with them as well. Like it honestly makes you wonder if they're like collaborating or something. That's just something on the deep end, you know? We've even contacted Brightfire, the owner of the Indie Cross mod, once again to see what they thought about Ash and also the whole situation too. As we've mentioned earlier, Ash has been working on countless FNF mods within the community and it honestly seems too good to be true coding for so many mods at the same time. Time. Well, we ended up getting an answer to this with Bright Fire. Bright does mention that Ash joins a ton of mods in the process, but effectively ghosts them and only focuses on a few key selected mods at a time. Now some contributors do go through this route in order to gain clout, in order to like add to their repertoire or maybe like to their resume of some sort. But of course, a lot of you guys are probably wondering how this is going to affect Roblox FNF games, such as Roblox Funky Friday and also Friday Night Bloxin as well. So what exactly is going to happen to all of the mods that Ash has been working on? I mean, we gotta keep that in mind, they've been working on 12 plus mods within the community which is insane like you can literally look at most of the mods on funky friday and you would see ash's name within the contributors list hmm. so that begs a question what are these games going to do with those mods that ash is affiliated with are they going to remove them are they just going to remove their name from the list usually what funky friday does is they simply remove the affected individuals from the credits of the mod and i highly anticipate they will do the same for Friday Night Bloxin as well. Now yes, Ash may have had a bigger role in selected mods that they were focusing on compared to most of the other mods that they were probably in. Like they really haven't done much of anything when it comes to those certain mods. Even Brightfire goes on to say that they ended up doing the least amount of programming out of anyone for Indie Cross just being active for a week which pretty much tells you everything. But what do you guys think about it? What should Roblox FNF games do with the situation? Should they remove these mods? Should they just remove Ash from the list? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure you smash the like and subscribe. 7,000 likes, everyone's gonna know about the situation and what's going on. Make sure you use Starcode Attack. We'll definitely see you guys on the next one.